So we're going to learn how to solve systems of equations. And when we're done, we'll know three different ways. So first off, what is a system of equations? So a system of equations is two or more equations that are related somehow. Um, so here are three examples. So 2x minus y equals 4 and x plus y equals 8. Right? Here's another one, right? both linear. We can also have a nonlinear equation. Um, we won't do that this term, but maybe next term. So y equals x squared min minus 3 and x plus y equals 1. Okay, so these are all um, examples of a system of equations. So the solution, which is what we'll be after, to a system is an xy pair, so an ordered pair, a point that makes both of the equations true at the same time. Okay, so graphically, it's the point where the two graphs intersect. Cool. So we will only be working with systems of linear equations in which of the above systems contains a nonlinear part. Right, and we talked about that one, right? So this system, right, that top equation, this is nonlinear because the exponent of one of the letters is um, 2. So let's just see. Um, Right, if we can determine if a point is a solution to the system. So it's a solution if it makes both equations true. So my system 4x minus y equals 10, 2x plus y equals 2, and the point we're going to check is 2, negative 2. So the positive 2 goes in for the x, the negative 2 goes in for the y. So here we go, 4 times 2 minus negative 2 is that equal to 10. So I have 8 minus a negative 2 makes it plus 2. That does equal 10. Good. So it works in the top equation. So that's good. But in order to be a solution to the system, it has to also work in the second equation. So here we go into the second equation. 2 times x being played by 2. We have lots of 2's here plus y. So plus the negative 2 is that equal to 2. So I have, that's 4 plus a negative 2. That's the same thing as minus 2. Is that equal to 2? It is. So since the point makes both equations true, it is, in fact, a solution, and, in fact, the solution to the system. Okay, so let's check the next one. So x is 1, y is negative 1. So we're going to plug those in, see if it makes both equations true. So let's see, 1 minus 3 times y, which is negative 1, is that, I don't know, equal to 4. So negative 3 times negative 1 makes that plus 3. So 1 plus 3 does equal 4. That's good. So it works in the top one. So then checking the bottom equation, the second equation, so y gets played by negative 1, is that equal to 3 times positive 1 plus 1? Is negative 1 equal to 3 plus 1? It is not. So since it doesn't work in the second equation, it is not a solution to the system. Okay. So there are three typical solution strategies. So one is graphing, right, and looking for the point where they intersect. Uh, the second is substitution. I'm going to do that one in another video. And lastly, elimination. I will do that one in the substitution video. Okay. So three different solution strategies. Um, there are also three different types of solutions. So we can have one unique solution. So if you think about two lines, right, two straight lines, they can intersect in one point. This is this consistent slash one unique solution. We, it might be that we have no solutions at all. This happens if the lines are parallel. And that is called an inconsistent system. So if you think about parallel lines, right, same slope. And the other thing we know about parallel lines is they never intersect. Well, the solution was the point where the graphs intersect. So if they don't intersect, we've got no solutions. Okay. And then lastly, we could have infinite solutions. So this is where the lines are the same line, right? Just different versions of it. it might be scaled 
or something. So, right, you'd graph your one line, and then you go to graph your second line, and it turns out it's right on top of its exact same line. And we call that a dependent system. Okay, so let's just practice this one, solving by graphing. It's not my favorite solution method, but you should just kind of have an idea of, of how it works. So we're going to graph each equation, and we're going to see the point where they intersect. Um, and then once we have our point from the graph, we'll go ahead and plug it back in just because, right, sometimes our graphs get, okay, my graphs get a little bit off and we just want to make sure. So here we go. Um, we'll graph the first one. I'm going to use the intercept method. So I'm going to find my x-intercept is 3 and my y-intercept is also 3. So I'm just covering up the x term and the y term because they would be zeros for the intercept. And I'm going to connect those two. Mm -hmm. Let's see, and I think I've got another color pen here. So let me grab that, and I'll, I'll graph my second equation in orange. And so for my second equation, I'm going to do a little um, algebra here first. And I'm going to add y to both sides and subtract 3 from both sides. So 2x minus 3 equals y. I hope that's OK. And then I'm going to use my um, slope-intercept way to, to graph that line. So I'm going to start at my y-intercept of negative 3, count off a slope of positive 2, so up 2 over 1, up 2 over 1. Oh, look there. I think we've got our line, our point of intersection. So let's go ahead and connect all of those points as best we can. So the one point that is true for both equations appears to be the point 2, 1. I think this is the solution. But like I said, we're going to go ahead and check just to make sure it makes both equations true. So checking the first equation is 2 plus 1 x plus y equal to 3. Yes, of course it is. And we'll check the second equation is 2 times x being played by 2 minus 1 right, the y value is that, equal to 3. Um, let's see, 2 times 2 is 4, minus 1 is 3. It was good. So there is our solution.